Welcome to CloudSec 2020. Uh, myself, Rohit, and I work as a solution architect in Trend Micro uh, here from Singapore. Uh, today with me is uh, Will Robinson. He's from the uh, he's from Australia, uh, and uh, he's also a solution architect. So, Will, what we are going to see today? Cool. Thanks for that, uh, Rohit. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, yeah, look, today Rohit and I will be doing a talk on S3 security using Trend Micro file storage security and Macy. So let's uh, dive right in there. Now, a lot of issues that we're seeing uh, are traditionally broken down into three uh, three categories, basically, in regards to uh, cloud storage. The first one is malware. Malware in internal files, meaning that um, internal employees and the like are uploading files that they didn't realize were malicious or customer files. For example, we've got a lot of government customers and the like that require that uh, that, that uh, users upload their own uh, their files to their, their website and the like, and they, they want that scan for malware. Finally, third parties such as partner um, organizations and the like. The next biggest problem that we're hearing about is PII data. So that's a personal identifiable information. Again, inside of internal files, uh, employees accidentally uploading uh, documents they, they shouldn't. Uh, customer files where customers are uploading things like uh, photos of their licenses and the like. And uh, third party files, again, from partners. Finally, what we uh, what we're seeing about is the storage around the uh, the cloud. Sorry, the security around the cloud storage. So, uh, as a Azure Blob storage or S3 buckets and the like, these things unfortunately are very easy to misconfigure or leave open to the world if we're not sure what we're doing. Uh, furthermore, we're looking at permissions, but we're also looking at whether or not things are encrypted, whether we're we're meeting compliance standards. So, for example, uh, do we need to lock objects or or a lock life cycle those objects into long-term storage and the like. Now, before I progress further, uh, Rohit, is there anything you want to add or is there any sort of uh, particular issues that you're seeing in your regions that that, that we've just um, covered off? Yeah, actually, uh, a lot of the the, uh, the things you covered actually uh, are visible in uh, actual entire cloud spectrum itself. Uh, so, like a permission issues, as you said, and uh, with the S3 as well, uh, you know, people uploading your documents from all the all kind of sources with a KYC kind of document could be from untrusted sources or people uploading from their mobile phones. And uh, yeah, we have to secure those things, and that is the main uh, pain point for the customers. Correct. Yeah, look, and the difficult thing about all three of these things is that they're often either outside of our control or, or quite difficult to control. So, for example, malware from a third party or an external user, it's outside of our control, and therefore we're not sure whether that's coming in or not. PII data, sure, that, that is within our control, but at the end of the day, we're humans and we do make mistakes. So we might accidentally upload something to cloud storage that we shouldn't. And, and on that topic of mistakes, when we accidentally or uh, um, misconfigure the security settings around our buckets, what should be internal is now public facing or external. And then of course, a lot of issues come off the back of that. Now, circling back to the first issue we talked about, malware, there's three primary architectures that we see uh, that um, have their pros and cons, and we'll run through that now um, as we go. So the first one is your, your traditional server-based architecture, where your users are uploading objects into your server. That server will then pass that object onto a S3 bucket, for example. Now, the way that we would invoke security here is a, a, an application or a security tool within that server. The problem with that though is that the time that it takes to scan that object is it could adversely affect the user experience. So for example, if the user is uploading a, a very large file, maybe let's say five gigabytes, and we, we, we are unable to provide a response to them because our server is churning away at uh, running that anti-malware analysis on that object, we're now uh, reducing the user experience there. So of course, this isn't an ideal architecture uh, in terms of user experience and, and having that balance of user experience and malware protection. Uh, anything to add them, um, Rohit? Yeah, actually, you know, uh, as you said, while the server churn out like a five gig of file and just, uh, uh, just thinking of the use case where people like a thousands of people uploading all sorts of files on the server and that require 
like a massive scales of server as well as that is going to be impact the costing of the customers yeah very good point and i like that you mentioned scalability because that's the next architecture that that we're speaking about basically lambda functions or serverless functions what we have here is that a user will upload an object to a lambda or a, a, a serverless type website now, because it is serverless, we're able to invoke one uh, one instance per user. So we're able to uh, basically give them the resources they need. However, we still have that latency involved. So we need to uh, basically take that object, uh, scan it, and then put it in the bucket. That takes time. Uh, and, and unfortunately, again, if that same Lambda is serving the user with a response, that user is waiting for that response as as to in regards to whether the upload was, uh, was successful done or not uh, anything to add there Rowie? yeah uh, actually you know uh, in all the serverless world and the s3 objects uh, nowadays people even go through the servers they directly provide like a pre-signed url and using that url people can actually upload their documents as well uh, mm -hmm. so in that case we even don't go through the compute uh, itself it will directly go to the s3 yeah, and that's a good point, Rohit. So with uh, the, the traditional server environment, we had a server there where we can put our anti-malware software. With a serverless environment, we still have a serverless uh, or a, a function where we can put our anti-malware intelligence into there. However, when we've got users uploading objects directly to S3 buckets, we have nothing in the middle in which we can uh, employ to scan those objects. And that's exactly where file storage security comes into play. So now with Trend Micro File Storage Security, it doesn't matter where that object comes from or how it gets to us. It doesn't matter if we're using a server architecture, a serverless architecture, or a direct user to bucket architecture. All that matters is that when that object hits the bucket, we automatically scan it for malware, as we can see on the screen. So that object comes in, we automatically scan it, and then, the beauty of the solution is that we've got customizable plugins. Basically, what you want to do with that object is completely up to you. Do you want to delete that object? Do you want to send a notification? Do you want to move it to a quarantine bucket, for example? You have full control and full customizability of what happens if, uh, uh, whether or not malware is found or not found in that object. Uh, anything to add there, Rowan? Yeah, actually, that's that sounds very good. But uh, you know, uh, what are the things that we can do once we found the or once we found the malware? And also, one more question that you know, uh, in a lot of this application, the file number of files which comes are very large, and there could be a possibility the file sizes are also in terabytes. Then in that case, how does it help? because it's serverless, as I understand. Well, correct. And so it's not only serverless, but it's a uh, asynchronous um, solution. So basically, customers will upload an object and the, the front end will say, yep, object, object is uploaded. In the back end, we have um, serverless functions that will scan that object. Uh, and then so really now the, the customer's uh, round trip times or, or uh, latency is not of concern because they're taken care of. In the back end, the Lambda functions will, will typically run for a few seconds, depending on the files, uh, file size, and then it will be able to, to carry out the, um, the, um, the task assigned through the customizable plugins. Wow, so uh, from your... Uh your answer, as I understand, uh, actually there is no kind of file size limit to it, uh, and it is completely asynchronous, so there is no overhead of servers. Correct, exactly. And so again, because we're talking serverless, we have almost limitless scalability. So whether you have five objects per second now uh, and 500,000 per second, for example, uh, next year or whatever it may be, we've got those serverless functions coming up and scanning the objects as required. And by being that, by doing that on-demand scanning, we don't have these these servers just sitting idle that that we're that we're paying for as they churn doing no no, no work. Uh, basically, it's on demand. So the, the function comes up, it scans, it reports, or it carries out the next task, and it sits uh, it sw it switches off, and then uh, basically waits for the next um, item of work to come through. Well, so uh, 
as long as there are new files coming up, it will automatically scan all the objects, whatever they're coming inside the S3 bucket, which which file source security is monitoring. Exactly, correct. So you're not paying for anything, uh, for any compute just to sit there idly. Oh, okay, so what we'll do now is let's jump into a, uh, a hands-on demo of file storage security. So let me go into my uh, machine over here. Okay, so this one here is called Cloud One. So Cloud One is Trends Micro Solution for cloud builders. So today we're talking about file storage security, but off the back of this Cloud One platform, we could just as easily switch over to traditional server security or serverless security or IPS security. All of this delivered through a, a single platform. But again, we're talking about file storage security. So all I simply do is click into the file storage security um, panel. Now, this is what the dashboard looks like. What I can do here is deploy the scanning stack, CloudFormation stack, into an account. Whether that's my um, my shared services account or my security account, it's completely up to me. This is completely versatile and customizable to fit anyone's architecture. So what I can also do is I can deploy this, the scanning stack and the uh, storage stack into the same account. Again, it's completely up to me. So I can have a centralized scanning uh, stack uh, or, or account, or I can have that uh, built into the same account as my scanning um, or my, my bucket account. So what I've done here, or for the purposes of this demo, I've got my scanning and my bucket CloudFormation templates deployed into the same account. So if I go to CloudFormation. So uh, does that mean, Will, that I can have both of the stacks separately and I can probably, you know, in a, in a large enterprise environment, I can put my uh, scanning stack in a separate account, which is probably a security account, and all of the storage stack is in my other child account. Correct. So in this instance, because it's a small environment or a small demo, what I've done is I've deployed them together. But you're completely right. I could put this one into my shared services or my security account. And then in each other child account, I basically roll out a CloudFormation template that enables my S3 buckets within this account to speak back to the centralized scan account or centralized scan uh, CloudFormation template. So again, what we've done, we've deployed the security. now. It's as simple as jumping into S3, locating the bucket that I've pointed CloudFormation to, and I upload an object. So this is one that I did previously. So I'll delete this object. Okay, that's gone. So now what I'll be doing is emulating a, a file upload. Again, it doesn't matter if it came from an EC2 instance, a serverless function, or a user literally dragging and dropping as I'm about to do into the S3 bucket. All that happens is that an object comes into the bucket and it triggers a security. So if we go add files, what I'll do is I'll up, upload an iCar test file. So for those that are unfamiliar with iCar, basically it's fake malware. It's a string of text that triggers anti-malware solutions uh, to treat it as if it is real malware. The reason why I'm using fake malware is because this object or this, this file does exist within my laptop. So I'm not very comfortable with the idea of real malware being on my machine. So now what I've done is I've clicked refresh and I come over to here. And I can see there's three tags added to this object. If I click tags, I can see file storage security has transparently and automatically scanned this object for me and tagged the object with necessary tags to en enable me to see what has happened. I can see that it was scanned successfully. I can see that the scan result is that it was malicious. And I can also see the date in which the, the scan occurred. So fantastic. I can tell that this object is now malicious. What do I want done with that object? What I could do is set up uh, post action scans. And that's where that those customizable um, uh, plugins come into play. Do I want to promote or quarantine malicious files? Do I want to delete them, so on and so forth? That's all done through code that we provide you uh, or customers and also code that they can mod modify uh, to their liking. If, if one of our pre or our cookie cutter lambdas don't suit your needs, please feel free to modify them or, or reach out to us. We're able to assist you with um, modifying it to suit your needs.
Now, I'm about to uh, go on to the next part of the presentation, but Rohit, before I do, is there anything that you'd like to add there? Yeah, so that means uh, once once the malware is found, I can do a multiple actions as well, right? That I can quarantine a file as well as sending an alert to the uh, to the security person in my organization. Just uh, correct me if I'm wrong. And also, uh, if I want to do some investigation, I can actually quarantine the object in and basically move that object to the S3 bucket, which is basically a quarantine bucket. And then the security person can take a look at that object and probably uh, uh, do further investigation. Yep, spot on. Again, you have complete control as per these customizable plugins. So you can customize them to do exactly what you like. The other benefit of file storage security being deployed within your account is that we're able to circumvent data sovereignty concerns. It's in the region where you've launched it. The objects do not leave your account, nor do they leave your region. Uh, and therefore, you don't have to worry about uh, issues that, uh, such as objects being sent left, right, and center, or, or leaving your country. That simply does not happen. Does it does it uh, require any internet connectivity for you know malware fingerprint updates or something like that? Does it require both things? Correct. So file storage security does update itself in the background, but yes, to pull down the latest threat intelligence, it does require internet access. We can, of course, give you the uh, DNS or endpoints and the like that you need. You would need to whitelist if you want to lock that down. That's completely fine. Okay, okay, that, that sounds reasonable actually. Yep, excellent. So next, PII data or um, personal identifiable information. W examples of PII data, credit card numbers, names, addresses, employee information, so on and so forth. Again, this one is, is quite often overlooked by people that don't have a security first sort of mindset. And, and it really, it shouldn't be because it is very easy to happen, a very easy issue to occur. You, you've got a file on your desktop, you may drag it to S3, that S3 bucket may accidentally be uh, open to the world or maybe it's too permissive. It, it, too many people have access when they shouldn't. And uh, right there and then, we've got a um, an issue on our hands. So how do we close out or how do we become uh, cognizant of these types of issues? Amazon Macy. So again, to, to sort of um, build out that picture, we've got a user, they upload an object. We've got file storage security scanning that object for malware. There's no malware, so then file storage security allows that object to reside within the S3 bucket. However, that, ob that object does have PII data in it. That's where the Macy icon comes into this, uh, this architecture. Now, I'm just about to jump into the console again, but before I do, uh, Robert, is there anything you want to um, add uh, at the moment? No, actually, that sounds good. You know, uh, all this uh, financial services or industries, uh, they are pretty much concerned about all of the PII data, right? Is it where is it going, uh, or is it upload getting uploaded to the wrong S3 bucket, or it could be you know the permissions of the bucket are uh, read to the world or something like that. Yeah. Uh, in that case, it is very important to make sure that the data you are uploading to the S3 bucket are uh, are not a PI data, or even if it is a PI data, it is under a secure uh, S3 bucket, which is which probably has a have very less permissions. Uh, so only like a handful of people can probably access it or only your applications can access it and no one else can access it. Correct, yes. And and look, in regards to keeping track of PII data, so for example, if we're allowed to put PII data in the cloud, it's still very difficult to track where it is. For example, uh, customers have hundreds or thousands of S3 buckets and it's simply uh, in infeasible to try and keep track of which buckets have PII data and which ones don't, which ones should, which ones shouldn't. And that's where Macy comes into play. So in my test S3 bucket, I've put some fake PII data, as we can see here, and Macy has correctly identified that I have just, or previously, I've just put an object up in the cloud that has PII data. So I click on here, and I get full information on the, the, the violation or just the, the advisement of the PII data. I click over here and it correctly tells me the exact lines within my data that are offending the Macy rules. And we can see also the type of data is named. So basically it's found people's names within that data. 
Well, but that's that serves like a, one of the main purpose of the lot of the enterprises with the uh, with the security of the PII data. Yeah, uh, correct. Yes, it, it it takes the the complexity out of identifying PII data. It makes it very very easy. And that that look that's a whole uh, one of the main reasons people do move to the cloud for simplicity. Uh, we don't want to do things manually. Basically, things like Macy, things like file storage security just work. We we just deploy them and they're there. They'll advise us when there's something that we need to do manually. Basically. Wow, so, about, oh, sorry. Go ahead. Uh, so that means a less human intervention, less errors, uh, and more automation. Correct. I mean, look, at the end of the day, we're all human. Humans get tired, we make mistakes, whereas computers don't. Basically, if we set something up correctly, it just works. And then when there is a decision to be made, we get the computers or all the, the applications to get the human's attention to then do that manual step if need be. Now, talking about making mistakes and security misconfigurations and the like, the final uh, issue that that we're also we're often um, we're often uh, told about from customers' perspective is cloud storage security in general. We've got our S3 buckets, we've got our Azure Blob storage, so on and so forth. But how do we ensure that they're secure now and they continue to be secure? So, for example. If, we, if it's secure today, how do we know that someone hasn't accidentally reduced the security posture of that, uh, that bucket or that blob storage? Uh, and this is where cloud conformity comes into it. So cloud conformity is a trend micro solution that basically is able to um, analyze your AWS and Azure accounts and their security posture. Uh, basically, we've got over 700 rules across uh, 70, 80 services across both Azure and, uh, and AWS. And basically what we do is we scan their accounts, we find the misconfigurations or, or the possible security issues, and then we educate customers on how to close out those security issues. Uh, I'm about to jump into the console again, but um, Rohit, anything to add there? No, no, I'm I'm actually good. I'm, I'm uh, I want to actually see the demo how it works. No worries at all. So this is cloud conformity here. Again, what it is is automated security. So what we see is a conformity bot is what we call it. It runs on your accounts and then presents you with information as we see here on the screen. It tells you how uh, how you align to the AWS well architect architected framework. It gives you a uh, overview of your security posture over time. Now this is a dev account. So in reality, what you do see is that things trend upwards. But of course, as uh, engineers are uh, demonstrating the product, we do create in insecure uh, environments and the like, which is why we're seeing it go up and down. We also get that, that uh, 30,000 foot view around the world of where our resources are deployed and where uh, where we need to direct our attention to immediately. So because we're, we're talking about S3 though, let, let me sort of drill down into the S3 uh, protections that conformity can provide us. So what we do is we click over here, we see a lot of success, that's fantastic, but unfortunately we see some failure as well. So let's filter down our checks. Again, we've got 70, 80 services, which we uh, we provide protection for, but let's, let's nobble that down to S3. Let's also get rid of the successes because at the moment, all we're really concerned with is our, um, uh, our failures, basically, or the things that we need to close out. We scroll down here and we're seeing all the common things that our customers uh, are concerned about. Uh, do I have encryption enabled on my S3 buckets? Is logging enabled? Is SSL enabled? Uh, so on and so forth. Object uh, locking and so on and so forth. But not only do we tell you, okay, there's, there's 26 areas that you could improve. You expand this and we tell you the exact, uh, the exact uh, service or the exact um, URL basically to the exact resource that is affected. You click on this uh, hyperlink here and it tell, takes you to that exact resource. Uh, you look at these tags and it tells you who's responsible for that resource. Uh, it's very, very simple security. Now, we've identified the resource, that's great. What next? How do we actually increase our security posture? What we do next, we click on resolve takes us to the conformity knowledge base. This is an open source knowledge base, open to the world. It doesn't matter if you're a conformity customer or not, you can come over here and see 
what uh, what what issues are surround something like default encryption being disabled on my S3 bucket. We get a nice little blurb of that, as well as the compliance standards and frameworks that we are basically offending by not or by having buckets which are not uh, encrypted by default. Now, for those that aren't using conformity at the moment, we do have audit steps, both through the AWS console as well as the AWS CLI. For those that already are uh, conformity customers and the like, then we go simply to the remediation steps. We don't need to do manual uh, checking because conformity has done that for us. We come down to remediation and again, we've got the AWS CLI steps as well as the, uh, the uh, sorry, AWS console steps, as well as the AWS steps. So look, um, basically that pretty much wraps it up from, from me. Again, just though, I guess the, the message that we're trying to portray here is that defense in depth, and that's something we often talk about within Trend. There is no silver bullet to security. And when we're, we're trying to secure something, there's often multiple vectors or multiple types of attack that we're susceptible uh, susceptible to. Though through a defense in depth approach, we can greatly increase our security posture. But look, uh, that's it from me. Uh, Rohit, anything, any last thoughts or anything that uh, you'd like to add? Yeah, I see it also as a layered security around the cloud, right? Or uh, even around your data, which is within S3, right? Where the conformity works on the on the cloud level, mm -hmm. uh, whereas the both the file storage security and the uh, Messi uh, both work uh, on the data level. So that's actually great layering protection that I'm getting for the S3, right? Uh, yep. So uh, I think that covers a like holistic approach towards the security of S3. Yep. Excellent. All right, then. Well, thank you for your time, Rohit, and, and thank you, audience, for watching. Uh, we hope uh, you enjoyed our presentation, and uh, we hope you enjoy your day. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, for joining our CloudSec session. Uh, uh, have a good day ahead.